Now we'll meet the first Samuel as we continue. As I prepare you, teach you, and train you how to kill giants in your life. We're going to be reading about a first Samuel, chapter 16. And I'm going to jump around for the sake of time because I want to go in and finish this so I was going to continue to move the church forward and where God has taken us. So we're going to start at 16, chapter 16, start at verse 1. When you have it, say amen. amen. And the word of God says, the Lord said to Samuel, you have mourned long enough for Saul. I have rejected him as king of Israel. So fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse who lives there. For I have selected one of his sons to be my king. I done read this so many times, but I love how God gave specific instructions. Just remember this, church. Catch this revelation. What God asked you to do, he will give you instructions on how to do it. But you got to make sure that you be still enough so he can tell you what he wants you to do. A lot of us won't trust God at that level because we're not sure. But God won't ask you. He'll be an unjust God if he asks any of us to do anything that he have not already qualified us to do. But that's, that's the first level of trust. There's another level of trust where you got to trust God even when God ain't spoken, told you nothing. When God initially tell you to break out and do something, you got to trust him on that, what he told you. And then along the way, he'll give you what you need. That's what he did with Samuel also. So jump down to verse number five. Yes, Samuel replied, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Purify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Verse six. When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eli and thought, surely the prophet missed it too. He took one look and thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed. Verse 7 says, but the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things going off of Christ's church and guests the way you see things. My God, people judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. My God, now jump down to verse 10. In the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen. The prophet said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked, "Where well, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse replied. But he's out there in the fields watching the sheep and the goats. Quit letting people count you out. Send for him at once, the prophet said. We will not sit down to eat unless he arrives. So Jesse sent for him. He was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. I already told y'all God loved me. And the Lord said, this is the one anoint him. Verse 13 says, as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flax of oil, my olive oil, and had it brought and, and had brought and anointed David with the oil and the spirit Thank you, Lord, for the spirit. Oh, the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. Lord, thank you for the word. Thank you. Lord, settle my emotions. Lord, you're so powerful. Lord, I just wish the people understand when your presence here is just like God. It's not that easy, Lord. Help me. Help me. Thank you. The people are ready, Father God. Thank you that the people may see and know it and understand that the hand of the Lord is upon this ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, say amen. You can be seated in the present. As I stated, you can go to the web page uh, uh, and the YouTube and so forth. Also, the CDs and DVDs available of last Sunday when I started this series called Down Goes Goliath. And as I dro dropped it in my spirit when I was working out a week or so ago and God said, spoke to me in the gym, my God, and down goes Goliath. And we shouted and that caught, that caught a wave inside of this church. But then God also began to speak to me about, now you got to prepare them how to kill giants. It's one thing to shout, my God, about down go Goliath, but it's another thing to have preparation. And God prepared David to kill Goliath. My God, David just didn't show up on the scene all of a sudden. There was major preparation that was going on that not even Jesse, my God, his father, knew that was taking place. God had everything worked out. And God is saying the same thing to each and one of you. God got everything worked out. God is getting you prepared to kill some giants in your life. Oh, my God, so you got to get comfortable with doing things in the mundane. You got to get comfortable doing things in the dark when ain't nobody taking, my God, notice of you. When it feel like you ain't making no head. 
perfect way. Oh, my God, when ain't nobody patting you on the back, my God, when you feel like you ain't got your hands to the plow, but God said, I'm doing an internal work to prepare you to kill these giants. Come on, somebody. You got to kill a giant in private before you can kill a giant in public. I said, you got to kill a giant in private before you can kill a giant in public. Many of us are trying to kill giants in the public, but we ain't prepared in the private. You win your battles, my God, in private, but you kill a giant, my God, the war, in public. And so I'm not going to mess with the, uh, 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 with the, with the introduction, uh, not all of it, but I, I want to encourage you to go look at this so you can follow me. And thank you for coming back. But I'm going to open up with the first part of my introduction. This chapter opens with God reminding Samuel, thank you, Holy Ghost, of the fact that he has rejected Saul as the king. Saul was, was chosen as chosen because the people wanted to be like other nations around them. As I told you last week, it's dangerous to try to imitate the wrong people. Paul said, follow me as I follow. If you're going to imitate somebody, Ephesians, also in chapter 5, Paul said, be imitators of Christ. Many of us say, but what do Christ look like? All you got to do is read the Bible and it'll show you what he looked like. Flip over there, I always tell people to Galatians chapter 5. And all the fruits of the Spirit, Mr. Oliver, they tell you what he's like. He's loving, he's patient, he's kind, he's good, he's forgiving, he ain't resentful, he ain't bitter, he ain't angry, he ain't got a nasty attitude. Come on, somebody. So if we got all these things, characteristics, that we're not, my God, following Christ, are looking like Christ. Are y'all with me so far? In God's choice of David as king, we can see the process. We can see the process, my God, of God, how God chooses when he chooses someone. I'm going to teach you the process, my God, as I stated. My God, point number one was God's choices are sovereign, but I'm not going to mess with that. So we're going to jump right over to point number two as we get going. So put point number two on the screen for me. God's choices are surprising. When God picked you, he spooked the whole world. When God looked over everybody else and chose you, don't you know when God chose you, people will get jealous? People will get envy because people want to hold you to your past. People don't mind you being defeated. People don't mind you talking about yourself and talking down on yourself, my God. But when you, my God, come to your, come to your senses and begin to operate in what God has called you to do, then it's going to force the people that's in your life for the wrong reasons, to make a decision. Either you're going to go with me or you're going to get left behind. Come on, somebody. Everybody's not going to be happy when God chooses you. Do I got a witness out there? So Samuel was sent to Bethlehem. Let me teach it. Samuel was sent to Bethlehem to anoint the new king. When Samuel arrives there, he commands Jesse. Jesse was the father of the boys. He commands Jesse to gather together his sons. They come before the prophet and pass by before him one by one. It is in this process, I want you all to write that word down, process. It's in this process that God makes known his choice for king. Now, keep in mind, God gave instructions to Samuel to go to Bethlehem, Pastor Dean. I'm going to show you who to anoint as king. At that time, he just had to obey. He didn't show him. God said, go. God had told some of y'all to go and you ain't went. Because you want to, my God, you want everything to be line upon line, precept upon precept, and you're disqualifying yourself, or oh, you're hindering things that God want to do in your life. I told y'all, my God, many of your miracles and many of your rich, you just don't know it. He said, go to Bethlehem. I'm going to show you who you're supposed to anoint. He said, I'm going to show you. He didn't tell him yet. Are y'all with me so far? And so it is the, it's in the process that God makes known his choice in the process. Once he got there, my God, his choice of king. But his choices, my God, while they are sovereign, my God, meaning God can do what he want when he want. That's what's sovereign. Also carry with them some real surprises. I promise you, many people are surprised to see this one up here. And to see y'all connected to this that God surprised the nation and the world with. I'm going somewhere. This is for you. I'm cool with who I am. I'm trying to help you get to find out who you are. So write down A up on the point number one. Let's look at the rejections. Now, as I was studying, my God, and, and, and working and putting this stuff together, my God. Now, why ain't that just like God? God reminded me when I was reading last night that my thoughts is not your thoughts and my ways is not your ways. What type of person choose somebody from rejection? We think everything got to be perfect before God to make a decision. But God can choose and do what he want to do, how he want and when he want. And so he chose this next king from reject. He had already rejected Saul. He also rejected the seven other boys. And now he reached for that young baby. Come on, somebody. And so God chose this king from the backdrop of rejection. The first of Jesse's sons passed before Samuel. His name is Elab. 
He's a fine, fine physical specimen. And Samuel thinks Samuel the prophet can mix it too, y'all. That's why you need to quit running from town to town, to church to church, when a prophet is in town. Won't you disobey the word you already? My God. It says, my God, the prophet thought. My God, Samuel thinks he is surely the chosen one. But God says, I have refused him. The word refuse simply means to reject. God reject. That's not it. Elab might have looked pleasing outwardly, but something in his character disqualified him from being king. He looked real good outwardly, but God has laser focus. God can see what you and I don't see. You will fool me and the first lady. You will fool people that's in your life, but you won't fool God. And so the king, my God, so Abinadab is next, and, and he too passes over and is rejected by the Lord. Next is Shammah, who he too is rejected. The one, one after another of Jesse's son passes before Samuel until seven have passed by, and all are rejected by the Lord. These men were all fine and good looking, but none of them possessed the right kind of character. God sees what man cannot see. So I said, okay, I have a general understanding, a basic understanding of character, so I went a little deeper. Character, more an ethical quality. See, God looks at your, your morals. I said, God, every area where my motives is not pure. I said, God, every area where there's compromise in my life, any more, my God, sin in my life, show me, God. Let me be ethical in everything that I do. Because God, the word of God says, God desires, y'all better stay with me. God desires truth in the inward parts. Remember, my God, everybody else is looking external, but God sees what's going on internal. And so a lot of us are disqualifying ourselves, my God, because we won't allow God to deal with those sinful, inconsistent areas that's covered up with a whole lot of education and religion. So I said, God, my God, my God, you, you, you stepped over a lot of people, my God, even though they can talk right, preach right, look right, dress right. Oh, my God, but they weren't ethical. They weren't moral. That means they got a whole lot of secret sin going on. Oh, my God. God said, I can't trust them with the platform. I can't trust them with increases. Oh, my God. They're going to steal from the church. They're going to, they as some of the prophets of old, my God, they prostituted themselves to idols and stuff like that. Morally unethical. That would disqualify you in God's kingdom. You may be qualified in man's eyes, but you're disqualified in God's kingdom. If you don't bring that stuff to God and allow him to clean it up. Notice I said if. You don't bring that stuff to God and allow him to clean it up. Come on, somebody. I don't want to be looked over. So God rejected seven boys, even though they looked at external qualified. Oh, they dressed real good. They looked like Dominique. They dressed up real good. Come on, somebody. They probably had a bald head like Scooter with a fat black beard like Scooter. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. They probably look like Brother Ronnie. They could sing. Oh, they was gifted with talents and resources, my God. Some of them might have graduated from Harvard. Come on, somebody. I could just imagine, my God, the different type. Oh, Tony. They probably was anointed as you, Tony. But God said there's something wrong with them on the inside. Oh, I, I can't take this chance, my God, and promote them to the next level, my God. Because if they get there, they're going to mishandle what I gave them. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm talking to somebody, my God. You want everything, but you ain't qualified yet. Because you ain't allowing God to do what he's trying to do on the inside. The Bible says first clean up the inside of the cup, and then the outside shall be clean. Don't focus on the internal. I mean, external focus on the internal. Oh, my God, y'all need to go with me. So some of us have been passed by because we won't let God deal with those unholy areas in our life. Oh, remember, I'm reminded of my God in the book of Timothy where the Bible says some of our sins follow. They trail behind us, but eventually they catch up and bring judgment. And so God loves you and I enough that we say, you know what? I'm going to keep Teresa right there. I'm going to keep Tanya right there because I don't want that stuff to come out. I'm going to give them grace and mercy to deal with that stuff because I got a platform for them, but I can't take them up there right now because they ain't ready. That's why you got to repent, my God, so God can take you to the next level. Oh, I'm in there. Y'all stay with me. We're going to finish this. Mm. And so, my God, God did not select them because there was something wrong with their character. So God chose by rejection. Write down B up on the point number two. Let's go a little deeper. Let's look at the requirements. See, there's also some requirements, Minister uh, 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 Tedrick, and when you're getting ready to kill a giant. There's some requirements on your point because God had already done it for you. Now you and I, I and you got to walk it out. God tells Samuel that he does not look at the physical attributes of man. Watch this, church. God looks at the character of a man's heart. I've already talked to you about character. This is a lesson the church, meaning me and you, needs to learn today. When we look for leaders, we often seek those who possess certain characteristics. 
my God, that we think spell, we think spell success and ability. We look for people of influence. I'm guilty of it. Power, guilty of that one. And intelligence, guilty of that one. So that's why I worship so hard, Tony, because, see, I just committed sin in all those. I look for people with power, intelligence. Come on. They look good and all that. I've done that. What am I trying to say? I got this, what I'm doing for Pastor Jeff. When he began to read the word and talk about different qualifications, he said, well, I missed it right there. Well, I missed it right there, too. Oh, I passed seven, but I flunked this. I missed that one. See, all of us, my God, need to be at the altar. All of us need to be asking God to have mercy and forgive me for my sin. Because all of us miss it. Ain't, oh, my God. Pity the man or woman that comes in the house of the Lord, my God, and never have a mindset to say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, show me. Lord, help me. My God, you come in and out, my God, of church, but you can't come in and out of the presence. That's why when the presence hit a church, my God, like it hit this church, my God, you will see people falling out. You will see people that normally don't get up out their seat, make their way to the altar because we realize that we are unworthy. The Bible says, my self-righteousness is filthy rags, my God. I don't care if a hundred of y'all give y'all life to Christ today. I'm still still considered, my God, a sinner. Come on, somebody. And we all stand in need, my God, of repentance, my God. We all need, my God, to do things, my God, that's pleasing to the Lord. Don't come into the presence of the Lord and don't have a mind to shift because you're not used to coming to the ch our church where they allow you the opportunity to come down to the altar. Some of us, my God, have come from church where they don't allow you to come down to the altar like that. If you come down there, they're going to mock you. They're going to laugh. They're going to talk about you. And a deacon may stop you and say, what are you doing? And so, therefore, we don't understand this is God. God beckons us to come. He said, come now to me, and I'll come now to you. He said, draw now to me, Tony, and I'll draw now to you. God wants his people to come to him. But church religion, my God, is keeping people on the outer court when God is trying to draw the church to the inner court. Come to the Lord, my God, with his fullness of joy at. Don't let nothing keep you on the outer court. Mm. So I'm guilty of looking for those type of people, people of influence, power, and intelligence. God, I ever looked for people of integrity and character. It must have been something about me, because he sure picked me. I just, I just disqualified myself, but he qualified me, because I do operate with integrity. I do got some character. Come on, somebody. So it must be something good about this old sinful man that God liked. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. That was to help you. Come on, somebody. But God picks and chooses, my God, and looks for people of integrity and character. As I told y'all, one of my things is to focus on more who I am outside the church than who I am in the church. I need y'all to grasp that revelation. Start focusing on your life and who you are, how you conduct your business, how you handle your finances, how you steward your life. Focus more on, out, on the outside than you do on the inside. Too many people are worried about what they look like in the church, my God. That don't mean nothing. If you take care of business in the dark, my God, it's easy for you to be who you are in the light. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God, so many people don't understand the freedom that I had. That's why I can shout and scream, Brother Finch, and holler, my God, because I'm free. I don't have to stand up here, my God, and feel no conviction, my God, because I'm living, I'm being a hypocrite. The devil is alive. All my family sit up here, the devil is alive. I walk in real freedom. And where I miss it at, I'm getting it right. But other than that, though, that don't disqualify me. I taught y'all that. Don't let shame and guilt rob you, my God, of an opportunity to kill a giant in your life. You better ask somebody. All of us going to make mistakes, including the one preaching. But I'm not going to disqualify myself because of mistakes. Somebody give God a hand. Oh, this is good, baby. Oh, this is real good. Give me a little more volume. I feel good. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I want Tony to get mad at him and say, Pastor, you can turn it up, but I can't. Come on, somebody. Give God a hand in the house of the Lord. <laughs> oh, my God. Mm. He wants people who are, don't turn up too loud. He wants people who are faithful and holy. Now, you got to understand holiness has come from God. We can't make ourselves holy by self-works. If you love God, the spirit of God will make you holy. What I mean by that, because the word of God will cleanse you. That's why you got to read your word. My God, Gospel of John, my God, chapter 15, verse 1, the Bible says God washes you with the reading of the word. God washes us breathe when we read his word. All you got to do is keep on reading every day. All you got to do is keep on reading every day. I'm talking about every day. Some not sometime, every day. And the more you read the word, the more God washes you. And the more God washes you, the more, my God, once he gets stuff out of you, once he gets stuff out of you through the washing of the word, then he can start putting stuff in you. Some of you, my God, you ain't getting no revelation because God trying to get all that junk out of you. You got to keep going through the process, my God. Now, let me say that again. Some of you ain't getting no fresh revelation because you got too much junk, got too much tradition, and y'all had it. I know what I'm talking about, my God. So there's a season, my God, where you got to do the mundane. There's a season where you got to press. There's a season where you got to get a shovel and dig. You got to get a knife. You got to get an axe, my God. You got to cut away all that stuff in your mind. And then once God clear away all the rubbish, come on, Nehemiah. Nehemiah couldn't rebuild the 
city, my God, until God moved away all the rubbish. And once the rubbish got out the way, then Nehemiah went in for the kill and started making progress. God is trying to get all the rubbish out your life. He's trying to get all them stuff that's blocking the spirit of God from working in your life. You got to allow God to shift and move you. You got to allow God to turn out and build back up, my God, so he can begin to pour in you. He said, I can't give you new wine, my God. Oh, my God, you ain't ready for new wine, new revelation, new idea. I can't reveal your purpose to you, my God, because you ain't going to do nothing with it but mishandle it, my God. God is trying to roll away all that stuff so he can start giving you new ideas and giving you new wine. But you got to let God roll it away. Yeah. Ooh, somebody give God a hand. Come on. Oh, I know I'm flowing. I'm watching the time, but I'm flowing. God is trying to give you something, but he can't give it to you because there's too much stuff blocking you. Yeah. Wrong mindset. You done got exposed to a lot of stuff, my God, that's not accurate. Right. Yeah. And it's interfering with new revelation. Yeah. As I told him in the class, many of us, my God, don't believe that Genesis through revelation, my God, still works. But the devil is a lie. This is still Bible. This is over 3,000 years old, and they have done everything they can. Thank you, the great Dr. King. My God, not more Luther, Dr. Miles Moreau. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. They have done everything they have tried to do to dis disqualify this right here. Over 3,000 years, they've been trying to put disqualify this and discredit this and put it out of circulation, but they can't. It's the only book ever that ain't never went out of circulation. Over 3,000, the longevity baby is tested. Huh? Oh, the word of God has been tested. The Bible says heaven and earth going to pass away, and the only thing that's going to remain is the kingdom, and this is the kingdom right here. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. This has come. The word has become flesh and dwelt among men, but men comprehended it not, baby. Woo, if you want to know how to do business in God's kingdom, get in his word. God's word tells you and I how to operate in his kingdom. Mm, come on, somebody. That's a little heavy for some of y'all. But you want to be holy, and holiness come through sanctification. After you give your life to Christ, now you got to allow the word of God and the spirit of the living God to sanctify you. They go hand in hand, mother. I said the word, my God, and the spirit, my God, needs to sanctify you. It means you go from faith to faith, Pastor Teresa, to glory to glory. See, my God, we can't get stuck, my God, in our pre-salvation condition. Are you with me? Many people get their life to Christ, but they stay stuck. They never be transformed. They still look like their old person when they get in the church. Oh, this is heavy. This is heavy. So let's move a little deeper. Let's move a little deeper. Are y'all with me so far? Oh, my God. God is not nearly impressed with people's achievements. Thank you, Lord. As we are, he is not concerned about the beauty of our outward man. And God looks at your life as, watch this, as God looks at your life, my life, what does he see? So I want everybody that's taking notes right down, what does God see when he look at my life? You slow down, write that down. You need to think about that. Not only do you think about it, pray about it. Some of us already know the answer. Some of us know he ain't, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't happy. And if they found out, they wouldn't be happy. Let's be honest. My God, what does he see? Does God see a heart that he can use? Oof. Or, does he, or does he say about your life the same thing he said about Elab? I refused him, meaning rejected. Oh, yeah, don't you know God will, that's a harsh word, but God will pass you by if you're not ready. God will step over you because God got to execute his will. The kingdom, Tony, got to continue to move forward, baby. And so, therefore, if you disqualifying yourself because of moral value, uh, unethical values and, and, uh, and hypocrisy and sin, and, and you think that it's okay to be laying up with men and women ain't your husband and all that stuff, you think that stuff is okay? My God, God will, I'm sorry, but I'm going to give it to you. He would step over you. Why? Because God cannot, he can't afford to have you up, my God, and you hurt yourself and hurt the people that's up under you. That's why 18 years ago, I wasn't ready to pastor the church. That's why he had to take me and grow me in stages, because I wasn't ready. There's a whole lot of work that had to be done, and there's still a whole lot of work that's being done, but I'm much farther than I was when I first gave my life to Christ 20 plus years ago, but God will step over you. I'm sorry he loved you enough to where he said, I, I, I got to protect you. Bishop, you should tell me, I got to protect you, son, from your own self. So when your pastor say no, it ain't about because I'm trying to be hateful. I'm trying to protect you from your own self. Remember, I had a Moses. I had a good Moses in front of me, baby. Oh, y'all didn't like that. <laughs> See, everybody want to be told, yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, my God. I said, sometimes I tell you no because I'm protecting you from your own self. And I ain't going to tell you everything. I might not even tell you why I told you no. You know why? Because that teaches me if you trust me. If you get bitter instead of better, you don't trust me as your pastor. See, I'm not afraid to put myself, my God. I'm not afraid to take a risk with my people. Because it's not about numbers. It's about your soul. Ooh, that's heavy right there, Tony. <laughs> yeah, my God, I said, I'm not afraid to take a risk with my people because it's not about numbers. It's about your soul. 
I know we're not used to hearing that. People in the church, woman of God, are not used to hearing pastors talk like that because they're more concerned about the numbers because they think numbers generate finances. That's not always true. Bishop taught us that, my God, you can have a 1,000 people in a, min in a ministry. On a Sunday morning, you have a 1,000 people and raise $500 with a 1,000. We didn't seen it happen many times. A 1,000 people in the church and only $500 is raised. Numbers don't always equate to finances. I just taught us a major lesson. God don't need numbers. He need right hearts. Ooh, my God, that was heavy. I'm in a whole nother river. My God. Mm. By the way, let me get this to you. My God, as I move, we judge. My God, by the way, we often judge by what people are. By what people are. We only judge by what we see external. God, on the other hand, looks at what they can become. God knows where you are. God knows what you're going to become. Why? Because he's your source. That's why everything that we try to do at going off a crisis is to get you vertical. It's my job and the leadership job to get you vertical. It's your P12's job, my God, leader, to make sure they are pointing you vertical. See what I'm trying to say? There are certain answers and things that you need that your P12 leader don't have the answer to. That's why they say read your Bible or go to God or pray. See what I'm trying to say? You need to understand that it's my job as a pastor to make sure that I get you vertical. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, don't disqualify yourself because of your past mistakes and failures. Because God is not dealing with you according to what you've done. He's dealing with you and I according to where we're going. Remember, God sees what other people don't see. Where other people see a mess, God see progress. Where other people will write you off, God see a king. God see a queen. They wrote Rahab off because she was a prostitute, but Rahab helped save the nation. Tony, they wrote hey, Rahab out because she should get down through the real proper. Come on, somebody, she should get her bread. It was purse first with Rahab. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. You got to put it on the wood, baby. But at the end of the, oh, my God, y'all need to fall with me. And so people overlooked her and disqualified her because of what she did external. But God had a plan. Why would God use a prostitute, my God? Oh, my God, to save the nation, to keep the bloodline that Jesus come out of. I can't get nobody to say nothing. He come up out of a bloodline with, from a prostitute, my God. But he used a prostitute, my God, a harlot, my God, to save, my God, the bloodline. Because everybody looked at what she did, but they didn't see what she was. Oh, my God, my God, there's diamonds on the inside of you, ladies. I don't care what you've been through in life. You better ask somebody. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, according to the Bible. God have need of thee. My, you're precious in the sight of the Lord, my God. You're beautiful, my God. You're beautiful. You're beautiful internal and external. That go for the man, too. We're handsome. God have need of us. So it's not good, my God, to come and be a spectator out of this church. Get involved so you can discover why God created you. Are you with me so far? Oh my God, God don't deal with you according to where you at. God is dealing with you with the, according to where you're going. Some of the hell you're going through, it ain't about where you at. It's about where you're going. Oh, somebody missed that revelation. Oh, my God, some of the hell you are going through right now, the turbulence, the uneasiness, my God, the frustration in the marriage, outside the marriage, with the kids, on the job, my God. It's all kind of stuff going on, my God. It ain't about where you're at, my God. The enemy is terrified about where you're going, and everything that you're going through ain't the devil. Some of it is God. God trying to shake you so he can get your attention. He's trying to wake up your dead conscience, my God. He's trying to shake you up out of that religion. He's trying to shake you up out of the familiar, because some of you are getting ready to do great things for God, and you got to trust God, my God. God for at a greater level. If you can't believe God for $100, you surely ain't ready for no ministry. God got great things for you. It's going to take great faith, baby. To do great things for God is going to take great faith. And a lot of you can't come out of your situation because you ain't got enough faith. And so God got to keep the squeeze on you because you're trying to build your faith. Thank you. Thank you. So it ain't about where you're at, but it's about where you're going. Oh, he tried to kill me a long time ago because it was about y'all today. Thank God I said yes, and that's six by nine. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, because your deliverance was tied up into this once junkie. I said, I used to be a junkie, but God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, told you, your deliverance was tied up into me. Oh, my God, my God, De Barry, your deliverance was tied up in this former junkie. I can't get nobody to say nothing. Walking down the street, selling my clothes. Everybody looked over me, laughed at me, talked about me, but picture me rolling today, baby. I started from the bottom, now I'm here. Oh, but God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there, baby. Hey, yes, sir. That wasn't for me, that was for you. What am I trying to do? If God did it for me, he's going to do it for you. But do you got a pursuit like I got? Are you Matthew 5 and 6, blessed is the man who hunger, 
Are you hungry for God? Are you hungry for church? Are you hungry for God? God saw what I could become. Even my beautiful wife for 30 plus years didn't see what she see today. I can't get nobody to say nothing. I thought about this too, though. Let me move forward. Mm. I was thanking Tony when I was reading. I said, man, you know, uh, God don't see as other people see. And I thought about you, Tiki. I did. I said, God, I asked God. I said, God, what did my wife see? Because she wouldn't leave. Her mama and family said, come on home. You ain't going to be nothing. My family told her, go on home. You ain't going to be nothing. But she always said, watch this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. She said that capital L-O-V-E. Yeah. Because she loved me, even in my weakest moments, even as I told y'all how I drove off and left her. Like I taught y'all when I drove off in the cab, I told him how I drove off in the cab, baby, and left you standing out there. My God, because, my God, I was yoked to that dope and yoked to them street life. And my baby, I hadn't been home in almost two weeks, my God, and, and I called a cab. My baby said, please don't leave you. Please don't leave. She was in a gown. Oh, but the dope was calling, Tony. The streets was calling. And I, and I looked at her, and I looked at the cab, and I said, drive off, and I left my baby standing right there. Why am I saying that? And you wonder why I'm so radical for God. See, some of y'all don't understand me, my God, but you don't really know my story. Can you imagine me leaving my wife there, and I told her to drive, told the cab to drive off. I shut stuff like that because I want you free. Boy, you're dealing with a real freedom up here with me, baby. I try to help y'all get free, man. I'm trying to help y'all get free, man. What did she see? She loved me. And like my wife would tell y'all, now this cause pastor talked out like that. I ain't tell, don't meet her. Don't, don't be trying to do what she did to me. Go, no, 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 because you might, everybody ain't going to turn out like your pastor. Now, she say that. Many of her daughters, she said, she said no, 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 my baby is called for telling you, I'm not telling you to stay in a situation that's unhealthy and it's dangerous. Everybody ain't going to turn out to be a pastor. Everybody ain't going to turn out to my God to overcome. Don't do that. Don't put that on my church. But she loved me. That's heavy right there. She loved me, Tony. When everybody else, my God, counted me out, my baby seen something that I didn't even see. Sharon, Sharon didn't see, my God. You didn't even see it, but Sharon did. Many times, get up. You, oh, you make me sick. She, now, come on, you know how they did us. Spank, my ass spanked me with a belt because I was so full. I was trying to get out, crawl out the house and all kinds. Of, get up, get your money. Man. It's all on YouTube, that's right, because I'm free. I'm trying to make you understand. You ain't got nobody up here playing. This is serious up here. I got a real testimony. That's why I'm serious about God. I'm trying to crawl out the house. She said, get up, boy. Get up. Get your butt now. Close the door, and I crawl back out. <laughs> why am I saying Because I need you to know what you're sitting up under, Oliver, which is you know it. I want you to know to the, de to the degree that I was disqualified in man's eyes. But God, Sarah. But God, Sarah. But God, Sarah, and those that has benefited from my life, you should be giving God some glory. Mm. Let's look at the reception. I'm moving forward. I'm going to finish this, y'all. Y'all enjoying yourself? Okay, let's, let's look at the reception. Write this down. The surprising reception. After seven of Jesse's sons have passed by before Samuel, and all seven have been rejected. Samuel finds out that there is another son. I need seven men. Come stand. Come on. Give me seven men. Even the men on the door. Y'all come stand. Come on. Give me seven men. Seven men. One, two, whoever. One, yeah, turn that. One, two. What we got? <laughs> Look at this. Tony going to be the first one to it. Tony's going to be Elab. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, we do. We shake hands in this church, and this ain't religion. One, two, three, four, five, six. So watch this, y'all. Get this image. And I'm moving. I'm watching time. But y'all let God finish this because we went hard for the Lord. Because I'm trying to show y'all. I'm trying to show y'all, man. Because many of you, my God, are sitting, my God, but you're qualified, but you keep telling yourself you're disqualified. You keep rejecting, my God, what God is trying to do. You keep rejecting what's coming across this pool pit. You keep rejecting what your P12 leaders is putting in you because they're trying to push you to the next level. They're trying to push you so you can qualify yourself instead of you disqualifying yourself. I know I got a sense of humor, but I'm trying to qualify you because God is already qualified. I'm trying to do what God has already done for you, baby. That's why I shut the things I shut. Elab. <laughs> now, Tony's fits that real good, don't he? 
and Eli was, Eli was tall and handsome and all that. And so prophet, I'm the prophet, so he looks at the man of God. Something must be wrong. Slide on. <laughs> this must be a Benadab. I guess Benadab was kind of buff and yoked and had, you know. <laughs> he dressed good, yeah, but you're not it either. This is Shama. I think that's how you say it, but that fits you too. <laughs> Dressed up clean, but something wrong with your character. <laughs> Boy, you really stepped your game up since you've been walking with past that. <laughs> I tell you, Tony, you get around me, you got to step your game up, baby. You look real good, son. You look real good. But you know what, man of God? I promise you, you ain't it. Well... See, remember, we choose by, by what they do. So he make a lot of money. Brian makes good money in the car business. And he, and he, and he give real good. Yeah, 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 yeah. He might have stole the money. He, he give real good. I wonder if he stole the money. <laughs> remember, we're dealing with character traits. Everybody that I just rejected according to the scripture, I'm still with me. Y'all stay with me. My God, God seen something. Every one of them men look real good, but God sees something in them, my God, that I don't see. Yeah. Well, I tell you. He just ain't ready yet. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, his, his wife trying to get me to be careful. It's just not his season to hit the pool pitch yet. Let's give God a hand for them seven. Now watch this. There was a purpose why I did that. Samuel finds out that there's another son. He is the youngest, and he is said to be with the sheep. He is so insignificant within the family that he is not even summoned with the rest of the boys. But he is left out of the feast and the sacrifice. The Bible says in verse 5, Samuel said, Samuel replied, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Purify yourselves. You couldn't come before the prophet unholy. And come with the come with a sacrifice. So God, Jesse brought all seven of his sons. They purified. They went through all the external formality. But his own father didn't count them in the number. Oh, y'all let me finish this. His own father didn't count them in the number, church. He was insignificant within the family. Some of y'all has been counted out by your own family. Some of your family won't even talk to you. My God, my God. He is not even summoned with the rest, but he is left out of the feast and the sacrifice. He is out there doing the job. Now watch this. He is out there, Tom Mac David, is out there doing the job of a humble servant. When he walks in, Samuel sees a handsome young man. God tells Samuel to anoint this one. For this is him, the one rejected and passed over by the others is the very one picked by the Lord. Stay with me. Stay with me because I got something I got to do. Samuel poured the anointing oil on his head. Bring him here, champ, right there. Neck behind him. No, the neck behind him. Bring him here. Look at it. He's scared, but that's David. It's my little partner. He's been watching my life for a long time. Dirty dads, we showed him the wrong way. But now he's trying to imitate this way. So when he walks in, this is David. Samuel sees a handsome young man. God tells Samuel to anoint this one for him. For this is him. Samuel poured the anointing oil on his head. Get the oil, pastor. Amen. <laughs> So 
So Pastor Champ, stand over here and anoint him as I preach the gospel. You just stand right there. Go ahead and anoint him, son. He poured the anointed air his heart on his head. And again, y'all, listen to this. Y'all sit down. Let me finish this. Y'all sit down. If you can, if you can. Again, we must be careful how we assess those around us. We look at people and think we know who God will use. And then we look and say, we know what God will do with them. God often, y'all listen to this, God, some of you are frustrated because you're trying to make your hand fit where it don't fit. God often passes over those, and those that others would choose and, and calls those that we would never imagine. God looks over those that we would choose. My God, and calls people that you would never imagine. God excels in taking nobodies and making somebodies out of them. The key to being used is possessing the right kind of heart. It's two people that God dropped in my spirit. One of them was going to be Kamari, but Kamari's off at the retreat with the other kids. God dropped Kamari in my spirit, but Kamari's off with the other kids, my God. And then God brought a vision and showed me my young partner right there. She didn't try to say, and that's why I looked for him, and when I seen him, I called for him. Because his, his testimony is my testimony. Without the crack addiction, of course, to it, but the gang, oh, my God. My God, and God showed me, it's so beautiful that he's here. Because it was Kamari, and then God showed me him. And then to find him, champ, and to see him, and bring him up here, which I just witnessed, it ain't just validating the scripture, we just anointed that man for a new season in his life, man. This is real serious, baby. And if he's not at work, he'll be at the man's meeting because he's hungry. He's hungry. He's hungry. So watch this. I want to get, get y'all out of there. Watch this, my God. Oh, my God. God deals with those who have the right kind of heart. Put point number three. I just got two, and I'm going to let you go. Y'all got to finish this so I can move on and get y'all ready. We talking about preparations to kill a giant. So, my God, remember, David was on the backside over there dealing with sheep. His father didn't even bring him to the, with the seven. He wasn't in the number. But he was faithful doing that, what God has called him to do. But God had this thing already picked out. What am I trying to say? Y'all stay with me. God got everything already picked out. That's why I told you in the spirit, woman of God, he who begun a good work is able to complete it to the day of Jesus Christ's return. My God, this saw him stripping the kingdom from Saul, did not catch God by surprise. He already had a ram in the bush, my God, when Saul summoned, my God, David, to play the instrument to calm him down because he was oppressed with a demonic spirit. My God, God was already preparing. What am I trying to say? Preparation to kill a giant. God was already preparing. God was already preparing. God was already preparing, my God, David, to be the king. God is preparing you for something. That's why certain things don't make you happy no more. Certain places don't fit no more. That's why some of you are struggling. Should I go to going over Christ? Or should I stay where I'm at, my God? Am I supposed to be doing this, my God? Some jobs that you started out in, my God, your hand don't fit no more. God is preparing you, preparing you, my God. God is getting you ready for another season, another level, my God. We remember there's always a process. There's always a process and there's always preparation when you're trying to kill the giants in your life, church. There's process. So look at this right here. God's choices are always specific. God didn't make no mistake with you. When God sent me to David L. Moss, my God, when I first met you, son, up in David L. Moss, where I met him at. Oof. It wasn't no mistake. God's choices are specific. It ain't no mistake, my God, that Michelle and Teresa, I mean, T uh, Yolanda, ended up over here. Your next was attached to me and my wife. You got a pastor, my God, that want to see you flourish. Right. You got a pastor that's not intimidated or anointed that's on your life. I welcome that, my God. Yeah. That wouldn't happen over there. You know, you know that. See what I'm trying to say? And so, oh, my God. They, oh, my God. specific. Childhood friend. We go up across the street from each other. Yeah. Who grooming you? God didn't say, he said, watch him. Yeah. Play close attention to him. Study Juju. Yeah. That's what God told Tanya. Study him. Don't just watch him. Study yeah. him. Yeah. If God told her that, and I believe it. Come on, somebody. Because there's something in me that she needs. Something in me that she need. Your deliverance came. Your deliverance came. Your healing came. Ooh, answer that. Don't get me started about you. Where you was and where you at. Look how God is using you, woman of God. Look at the influence you got in the kingdom now. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But see, God's choices are specific. 
I could go on and on like I did y'all last week, but I'm going to leave that alone. Francetta, Scooter, even when my wife seen me when I was 17 years old looking like David, probably wearing 119 pounds with a long curl and all that, dripping wet. Come on, somebody. Oh, she said, but he cute. I wasn't going hard back then, Dirty Dice, but she said, he cute. My wife told me that God specifically chose you for me. I give God the glory. All right. So let me give y'all these and get y'all out of here. God chooses those who are ready. David was ready. Why? Because David was getting it done in the dark. I ain't going to be long because David was getting it done in the dark. David was faithful to that which God what well, really what his father asked him to do. Jesse them had cattle and sheep and so forth. And so the young soldier, listen to me, son, the young soldier was over her because he was too young really to be in war. So his older brother's son was in the war. But see, they was doing what God told them to do, but God was doing what God told, David was doing what God wanted David to do. They was doing what they was told to do, David was doing what God, oh, do y'all see the difference when you do what God wants you to do and not what people want you to do? That's why you're frustrated because you're doing what people expect of you and want you to do instead of doing what God wants you to do. And so because of that, write down, my God, God chooses when you're ready. When David is brought there, when David is brought, there is no time for him to be sanctified like he did the rest of Jesse's uh, rest of his brothers, but he is ready nonetheless. David, y'all watch this, is a, ooh, thank you, Lord. David is a picture of the believer who, ke who keeps his heart in a state of readiness. He does not know when the Lord might call him. This is heavy, Tony. So he stays ready at all times. God does not use dirty vessels, but he uses those which are clean and ready for his call. Let me bring some con con context to that. When you give your life to Christ, see, God picked you in spite of what you've done. The Bible says, while you and I was yet in sin, Christ came and died for you and I. But now we are professed Christians. For those that are Christian, we are professed Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. You and I have a mandate to allow the Spirit, my God, and the Word of God to sanctify your life. And to God take you and show you what you're called to do, you have an obligation to God to make sure that you're getting ready and that you're staying ready. You don't get a pass to say, well, I ain't called to preach. I ain't called to teach. That devil is a lie. You're called to live holy and righteous. Are you listening to me? And so you don't give yourself a pass, neither do I give myself a pass. You got to make sure that you are doing your part. David was faithful to that what God has called him to do. You know why we don't stay faithful to things? Because we ain't sure it was God. When you know that you know, your calling would demand that you stay on the wall. Your calling would demand that you don't quit. Your calling will put a demand on your life. You don't get to quit when you know it's God. I said your calling will put a demand on you. Even when you want to quit in the flesh, even when they frustrate you, even when you want to walk away, you can't walk away because the calling is on your life. And so this last thing, right, B, up under here and I'm done. God also chooses those who are reliable. So are you ready this afternoon? Some of you are the next kings. Who's to say the next Barack Obama ain't sitting here? See, some of y'all, y'all can't even think like that. Who's to say that the next female president ain't sitting here? Who, 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 the guy that built Apple, Jobs, whatever? Who's the next whoever? Who, see, when I, I'm speaking to your potential. Until someone put a demand on your potential, your potential will always lay dormant. I'm speaking to your potential. Who, who, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered to the heart of man the things that God has in store for those that love him. See what I'm trying to say? Who, who, God is, who, are you ready? Are you reliable? Are you saying yes? Are you growing in the dark? Are you flipping the pages? Are you watching your life? Are you careful for what you're listening to? Are you careful for what entertainment you're exposing yourself to? Are you protecting your anointing? Some of y'all are anointed, but you're not protecting can't be contaminated in your anointing. 
You can't just be joining. That's why 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good morals or good habits, my God. You can't just join yourself to anybody. Everybody can't handle you. My God, when you're anointed, you got to protect your anointing. Oh, my God, don't get me started. I'm trying to finish, my God. When you're anointed, Troy, you got to protect your anointing. Everybody don't fit, my God. Are you listening to me? Everybody don't belong. Are you listening to me? There are certain people you got to disconnect from. There are certain people you got to move on away from. I know it's going to hurt them. I know they're going to talk about you. I know they're going to laugh about you. But they can't go, my God, because you're too anointed. All they're going to do is criticize you. All they're going to do is stifle you. All they're going to do is hold you back. All they're going to do is make you feel less than. When you're anointed, you got to break camp in advance. Oh, my God. I'm going to give you all this last one. Thank you for the time. David was ready. Even though he was looked or overlooked, even though he'd been through a lot of things, he was so faithful to his assignment. Oh, my God, let me close it with this. This is good. But are you ready? Are you getting it done, church? God chooses those who are reliable. When God calls David, he finds him faithfully, watch this, doing what he was told to do. Faithfully. David did exactly what he was asked to do by his father, take care of the sheep. His father in the story would be God, though, bring it up to us. Are you doing, y'all stay with me, what God told you to do? Some of you probably say, well, Pastor, I don't know what he told me to do. So that puts a demand on you to get in his presence, open up his word, and find out what you're supposed to be doing. Why would you go through life every day not doing what God wants you to do, but you're doing what everybody else wants you to do? So you in bondage, as I taught you Wednesday, to people, I'd rather be a slave to God. I'm not through. Mm. He's faithfully doing what he was told to do. He's keeping, watch this, the sheep. But you don't know, see, God will use anything to prepare you to kill a giant. God will use anything and anybody to prepare you to kill a giant. Somebody should have wrote that down. God will use anything. And anybody to prepare you to kill a giant. David is doing a dirty, watch this, lonely job. When you're doing God's will, let me tell you something, there ain't no glitz and glamour. When you're really doing what God has told you to do, there's a whole lot of lonely times. I told y'all, even though I got a lot of good people around me at times, my wife would tell you I feel lonely. Don't you know, my God, you can have people around you and still be lonely? David was doing a dirty job. He was, who would I taught y'all when I preached that message? He was shoveling. Y'all look at me, sheep dung. He was shoveling and taking care of sheep. Every time they used the bathroom, he's shoveling sheep dung. He was smelly. He was dirty. He didn't get no manicure every week. He showed and dressed real proper. I can't get nobody to say nothing. But he was doing what God called him to do. He suffered on the front end of mahogany so he could be a king on the back end. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He said, Pastor Peoples, you can shine right now. You can shine for 10 years. David said, I'm going to shine as a king for 40 years. Oh, my God. So you got to be willing to pay the price on the front end so that you can and, and so you can reap the benefits on the back end. My God. You got to get, get it done. My God. When it's painful, Krista, when you're lonely. My God. When things are hurting. My God. When you don't understand everything, you got to keep on working. My God. Because God is doing. You got to keep on shoveling. You got to keep on shoveling. My God. You got to keep on praying. You got to keep on fasting. You you got to keep on seeking. You got to keep on reading, my God. You got to keep on doing stone number one. You got to keep showing up, my God. And before you know it, God is building a king and a queen. But because, but, but he does it because he was assigned to. Your assignment will make you show up. Your assignment will keep you in God's will. Your assignment will help you strive to be righteous and holy. David is doing what his assignment called him to do. How many of you have quit inside this church and stepped away from something that God has called you to do? How many of you have, 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 have self-sabotaged your spiritual assignment? And you, some of you have even shipwrecked your natural assignment. After he's anointed, don't miss this revelation, y'all. Samuel anoints David, and guess what David does? David goes right back to tending sheep. What is that saying? Y'all listen to me. Just because you are anointed to do something, it ain't time. 
David was anointed, but it wasn't time for him to take the office of the king. So what did he do, Tony? He didn't say, okay, I'm anointed now. Now it's time for you to get out the way. Let me assume my throne. No, no, no. David went right back to the thing that God told him to do. Right back to the backside of the mountain and shovel sheep dung. Some of you, my God, has got out, as I taught y'all, out of God's timing. You have got in the way instead of letting God get in the way. Things has happened, and you thought that it's your time because the door opened. That's why you got to have a pulse and a heartbeat for God. David was anointed the next king, and David went right back to a lonely, dirty job. David was shoveling sheep dung with a king's anointing. He was shoveling sheep dung with a king's anointing. He was shoveling sheep dung, baby, with a king's anointing. Just because you're anointed don't mean you can't shovel no sheep dung. See, don't get full of yourself and think, my God, now that you're a king, now that you're a queen, because you are, and I am, come on somebody, that don't mean you don't get to get down here with the sheep. That don't mean that you don't get to take off your shoes and your dress pants and your dress shoes, come on somebody, and get down here as a shepherd with the sheep. And while you're down here shoveling sheep dung, you're saying, God, I'm staying committed to my assignment. Because when the time comes, as we always say, what God has for us is for us. As I close it, you must be faithful. David was. Where you are. Where you are. Many of you are members of going off of Christ Church. Are you faithful? Where you are? I'm not talking about church. I'm talking about growing in the dark. Because if you get it done in the dark, you're going to be faithful in the light. The best thing you can do is grow where you are planted. Many, many people have uprooted. God bought them her mother to be planted. And they got their soil in the ground. They, they, they got their roots in the ground. And because something didn't go their way, they uprooted themselves. And now they're sitting in places, but they're not fulfilled. I get the calls all the time. I done had them call me just recently. said I should have never left going off of Christ Church. I told him, well, you shouldn't, I never told you you had to leave. It ain't always green on the other side, y'all. Your character and your integrity and your faithfulness and your sense of responsibility in the ordinary, mundane events of life. Your character, your responsibility in the ordinary, mundane events of life is very important. God knows where you are. Jesse may have forgot about his son. The prophet who called down, made it rain, Samuel made it call rain down, made it rain, even though he was full of God, did not know that it was another son. But God knew that there was one more. God know where you at right now. God know where you at right now. I'm not talking about your physical, your physical position. I'm talking about your spiritual condition. He know where your soul is at right now. He know where your heart is at right now. He know where your mind is at right now. He know where your marriage is at right now. He know where your kids are at. Some of you don't even know where they're at. He know what your children are doing right now down there with the other kids. My God, right now, but you don't. What am I trying to say? God has not forgotten you. God know where you at. Adam, where art thou? He asked Adam that, not because he didn't know where he was at, because Adam lost where he was at. Yeah. 